everybody. What I'm going to be doing today is talking about the Build Material tab. And here's kind of the agenda what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the different types of build materials that are available to us inside of PDM. I'm going to show you how to compare some build materials. We're going to do some overrides, uh, some edits if you're interested to. The gem in plain sight, what that one kind of is, is I'm sure you've seen when you're on the build material tab, there's lots of different options in there. And we're going to kind of go through some of those. A lot of people I find don't really know the neat things that are even available to you. So we'll talk about that as well. Talk about um, how you, uh, certainly you know that you can export out your build materials into Excel. And I'm going to show you some nice ways to kind of format that, give you some ideas to think about. And we'll certainly get into my favorite part at the very end is the M-bombs and E-bombs because those are the best. The, uh, well, everything we're going to talk about today is, well, that's not fair to say everything. Most of the things we're going to talk about is going to be good for PDM standard. Everything will be good for, for PDM Pro. And I'll make sure that I'll make a comment as I talk about things that uh, are, aren't available in the PDM standard. But most of this stuff is going to be available for, for both of you. The ideal uh, attendee of this guy is probably going to be a, a regular user, but certainly administrators can get some things, ideas here too, because you know as, as you might want need to turn some settings on and make some changes to that. All right, enough talk. Let's start playing with it. So first thing I want to talk about is the build material types. Uh, what kind of build materials are, are available to us in, inside of PDM? And, and certainly the first one there up here on the list, the, the build material, that's one we all know and love. That's the calculated build material, right? That's built every time you check in a SOLIDWORKS uh, assembly or any file that has components, it's going to build that type of thing up. We do have other kinds of build materials as well. The, the Wellman build material and the Wellman cut list, they're very similar. Obviously, they only make sense if you're looking at a SOLIDWORKS weldment. But the main difference between the two is the cut list is, imagine you have, uh, let's say, some two by two squares steel in your assembly. And uh, you, it's, it's eight feet long, and you cut it in half, and you weld them two different places in, in there. Well, in that example, the welding cut list would show a quantity of two at four feet long. So that's kind of what the cut-up guy cares about, right? What, what do I need to cut these pieces off as? And the welding build material would say you'd have one eight-foot stick. And so that's for like the purchasing person to get an idea of how much stuff I need to be able to buy. So that's the big difference between the two. And again, just like the calculator build material, those are, are automatic. As long as PDM recognizes that it's a build material and you have it set up properly, those uh, those happen are updated every time you check in that weldment. The other one there is the the top right hand corner. This one is the symbol for a named build material. And so that's kind of what we were talking about earlier, we have the ability to have different types of build materials. I can take a build material and give it a name, and they can be modified it as well. And on the bottom right-hand corner, you see that icon. That is any time that you are looking at a SOLIDWORKS file that contains a build material table, that icon there gives you the ability to see that, that other icon. So all five of those are available in, in both PDM Standard and PDM Pro. The sixth one, which I didn't even mention up here, that it is a build material for items, which is a PDM Pro thing, which is nearly obsolete. I really don't know too many people still using items. But if you are, that, that, that is your sixth super secret one that, that's available to you as well. Because all these build materials can be saved out of, as a common delimited file, saved to an Excel, do whatever you might need to be able to do with those. So the first thing I want to talk about is the comparable material. And uh, let's go ahead and bring a build material up. I'll bring us, to, bring us to PDM, take us to a project that has a build material in it. So at this point in time, if I click on this assembly, my build material, you see that I'm looking at version 2. And certainly, we can switch to different versions. But sometimes it's tough to tell, well, what's the difference? I see some things flash, but what is, what is the difference between the two? And that's what this little button over here does. It gives me the ability to compare the two build materials. So now I'm comparing version 2 default configuration to version 1 default configuration. And down here at the very bottom right-hand corner, hopefully you guys can see that, is uh, just a little key. So if I see anything that is red, that means it's been deleted from going to version 1 or 2. Anything green would be anything new. Or anything modified, and if I you know, and had a little, uh, maybe change the quantity or stuff, this gives the ability to see that too. So I don't really like this, right? Let's imagine that you're a purchasing agent, and you're told, hey, I need you to purchase this, this build material too. And what's the first thing they always come back to you for? 
well, what's the difference? What do I need to buy? What do I need to sell back to stock? That type of thing. And here now they can get that information all to themselves. And of course, just like like any time I'm looking at grid information, I can take this and export it out as a common delimited if somebody else might need to see this particular stuff. But a uh, real quick way to compare bill materials. And I can compare uh, different versions too. I mean, I can compare different uh, configurations or even different uh, types of choices within those. So, so you can pick and choose. Whatever you what is, is selected when you first start the tool, that's what is going to be on the left-hand side, and then you can make changes. So the edit build material, and this one's kind of interesting one, well, but let's bring back our, our tool. If I click on an assembly that is checked out, let's go back to my other assembly. Anytime you see squares that are blue, that's an alert to you that this is actually editable. And so right now, you see that the, the crank arm assembly is checked out, so I could change the description here if I wanted to. And then you see that all these document numbers, they're blue. And the reason why is that I have the document numbers as a version 3 variable. So I can make changes here. And that actually will go find that associated part and update its data card as well. So and back when I was designing, I always remember half the time I forgot what the, you know, to assign some materials or something like that. And this is always a real quick way to scan through your list to make sure that you find everything before you start releasing and requisitioning things out. Now, something that kind of ties in, and we're talking a little bit more here, is, is this option of the as built or as latest. And just kind of remember, the, uh, if you switch to the latest, that means that you're looking at the actual versions uh, that, that is today, versus the as built means is what did this assembly exactly look like when that assembly was last checked in. So you usually can do less with a, a calculator build material when it's in the, the the as built, but when it's latest, you notice that it, the other options have turned on to me available as well. And so, because the crank assembly is checked out for me, you see that I do have the ability to even edit the quantity. So, if you see, this is a little indented structure here. I can check out the quantities here. So maybe I want to do a quantity override and say, oh, actually, we need more. We can make the changes here too. These two guys over here, we'll talk about here in the next couple slides. So I'll skip over that for right now. So again, kind of what we're talking about before, the as built button. You kind of think of, of exactly what that assembly looked like back then. So let's imagine that uh, this is the as built, and, and maybe this assembly, was, when the last time this assembly was checked in, this pin was out of a particular version, maybe version 3. And way back at version 3, this part was at steel. But time has passed. Maybe the assembly's still at the original version, but that pin has maybe graduated on to several more additional versions. So now the pin is stainless steel. So that's the difference you'll see there is if I see as built, that will tell me exactly what was in that assembly back then and what all the children were back then as well. If I choose latest, it'll say, okay, here's what was in that assembly back then. But by the way, the pin is at a newer assembly. So be kind of aware of the difference there. There's one little tiny toggle there that seeing people not pay attention and, and make assumptions that of uh, their particular assemblies. So um, that's a very important little option there that a lot of people don't think about especially if your, your parts change after the assembly has been released. So quality override, let's go back to that, my assembly here. So let's, let's imagine that uh, in my best example I've ever done with this was I was doing a breadboard and it had a thousand little LEDs on it. Well, I didn't want to go ahead and model all thousand little LEDs because it, it would take too long. So what I could do is I could come to the actual part itself and, and type in the value that I want it to be, and then hit the Save button. And then I've now committed, changed the quantity that the build material thinks of for this particular crank arm. Now, if I ever look at this assembly again, it's going to think, oh, there's a 1,000 or 100 crank arms there. And this will turn orange. And that's kind of alert to you that, hey, you've done a quantity override. And why that's important is that now, I'm responsible for the quantity of that crank arm. So in the future, if ever I go into the actual model itself and change the number of crank arms, the build material is still going to say 100, regardless of whatever it changed, because I've done an override then. So now I always have to remember that um, I'm responsible for that number. If ever I change my mind and say, I really would like to go to the model quantity, I can right mouse click on the, that changed 
quantity value, say, now go back to the computer quantity. Now PDM is going to be responsible, and now every time I check in this assembly, PDM will scan and count the total number of crank arms and get a, get a good understanding of each one of those, how many of each one of those the guys are. So be aware of that. It's kind of handy, but with great power comes great responsibility. You have to make sure that you, build those, you keep those quantities up to date on your own from now on. This is my favorite slide. So we, all of us here, we speak English, and we can all probably agree that this option right here highlighted is in English. But um, for the most part, when I teach this class, nobody really knows what this means. Look for variable and reference specific values. So again, where I am, I'm in the administration tool. I've added an assembly number field in here, and I've chosen to look for variable and specific values. And, and so really, what does that mean? What, what it basically is, is that this gives you an opportunity to have assembly specific information about a part stored in the build material. So the most common example I, I see is maybe balloon numbers, right? You know, if, imagine you have a part that's used in several different assemblies. Well, in that case, that part, where do I store that balloon number? I don't want really to store it at the part level because that assembly A might be part number one, and assembly B might be part number 14, right? So it could be significantly different. So that kind of information doesn't make sense to store at the part level because it it's, doesn't really define the part, so it has to be stored at the assembly level. And there's really no place to store that unless you do something like this. If any of the material, you, you make a special column, make it to this. So the procedure is you make the variable. And, and really, this is the only time I ever make a variable that I don't put that variable on the data card. Again, because it doesn't make sense to have store at the part level. So you just make the variable only. Then you come add it to this list and select here. And now that will, that will be available on my list for assembly notes or different types of things. So common other things, certainly balloon numbers is very common. Um, another good one I like to see is spare parts. Right? Maybe in one assembly that part is a where part where I need to recommend this as a spare part. But in another assembly that part is used in a little bit of a different ma manner and it doesn't necessarily need to be a spare part. Uh, comments, uh, maybe torque values. In one assembly I, I torque the, the the bolt down 12 foot pounds, another assembly it needs to be torqued down a little bit tighter. So that's a kind of another kind of thing that it doesn't store at the part level. And so here's just what this looks like. In, in this example here, in my assembly, I have these two guys here. They are listed as these that special variable type. And I can now come in here and I can type in anything I want on in the, into here. And then later on, if I use this crank arm in any other assembly, the assembly notes will be empty because this, again, is stored only at this assembly level. So it's kind of a neat little thing. It's a very, very hidden gem that not very many people know about, um, mostly because it's hard to understand what that means. So kind of remember that. That's a really nice one there. I, I love this option. So configurations, um, this is kind of, I, I guess I don't really need to show you a demo, but certainly you, you've seen build materials where you have a choice between the default or whatever configuration name that you've cho chosen and at the at level, right? I'll just real quickly show you what I'm talking about again. It's right here what I'm talking about. If there's many configurations or the at level. And the difference between the two is let's imagine that I have a particular pin that's used in, in several different configurations. Well, if I choose a configuration, then PDM will go, okay, Here's configuration and, and configuration name. Um, so this kind of makes a lot of sense to a lot of people. But at the at tab, in this case here, you see I have a quantity one and quantity two. In, in the at tab, it would say, well, you have a, that pin is used a total of three times, but it doesn't display which configuration it's available to you. So it's another one to be kind of careful of when you're looking at PDM build material. Make sure you've chosen the proper choice there because you can get a significantly different looking build material. And you might need to be aware of which one you're looking at. All right, this one's kind of interesting. You know, and I've made it if I want to show you guys or not. But um, I get this question so often, I thought I would go ahead and at least show it to you so, to get an idea of what's going on. I get questions all the time that say, okay, when I export out a bill material to Excel, it's kind of ugly. It really, uh, you know, the words are written on top of one another. I want colors and things like this. And, and is there a way that you can do that? 
And the, the quick answer is not really without some additional code. And so I want to show you just a, a way that you do it for, for free. And then certainly if you were looking for something more advanced, you can always give us a call and we can help you with more advanced. But uh, free is pretty cool. So I'll show you how to do it for free. So where do I store that, that code that I was talking about? Well, some people actually store it in their Excel template itself. And so if you ever put the code in Excel, that means every time you start Excel, all that code is actually built inside of there, which is kind of neat. But the downside is, is that you probably do Excel for more than just build material items. And now i got that code in over and over and over again. So I'll let you decide if you like that idea or not. Um, but what a lot of people will do is they'll, they'll just make a Visual Basic script to do it. And so the easiest way to do that is, is to record it. I don't know if you've ever done any recordings and scripting, but you just go to Excel, say record, and then you go through and, and build up, do whatever you need to do, and then tell it to stop recording. And then the neat thing about the script is, is, is that you can run it again over and over and over again. It just repeats those same steps that you've done before. And if you're ever interested, you can uh, send me an email, and I'll send you this sample script that I'm going to show you with. But the gist of it is, all I need to do then is add these two lines of code at the very beginning and build this up. So instead of talking, let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to minimize this for a second. And let's go back to our build material that we've been playing with for a while. Well, what I want is I want to open this into Excel. Um, so you, hopefully you've seen this question before. This is saying, hey, would you like me to add an additional column to this build material column set that shows the depth, right? It was showing me, you know, so I can quickly see that uh, this is a child of each one of those. In this case, I don't need to do that. Let's go and open up into Excel. So you see Excel pops up, and it looks like this. Now, what I did earlier was before I went through and I went to my developer tab and I recorded a macro that I just simply said, all right, make all these one particular color, make them bold and build that out. So I did it one time, and I saved it, the, the code here in the VBS file. And so now as a user, what I, lots of people do, they'll either put it on their desktop or put it somewhere handy, and then open up the build material, double click on this guy, and it just quickly does repeat those same steps again. So it's a real nice way, Then certainly now I can pass this on to more people. So I want to show you that you can just, without much effort, I'll show you what this code looks like. So from here up, this is all exactly what the recorder gave me. And I just took that out, added these two lines at the very beginning, which are, are, are on the slide presentation, or you can when you preview it, or certainly just email me and I can send it to you. And um, save that as a VBS file. That's the trick. It has to be a VBS file. And then you can run it over and over and over again. It will find whatever Excel object is open and format to however you built that up. So again, I don't want to make this a, a VBA application or a presentation, but I just want to give you the idea that, hey, we can do this, something like this really pretty quickly and easily. And as long as you know a little bit of Visual Basic, we can build that up. Yeah, so here's the gist of it. I've went through and tweaked a little bit, add some uh, with the worksheets and with, but uh, here it is. So let's talk about the, the, the big one left. We have uh, 10 minutes left, I believe. So we'll, we'll talk about the, the build materials. So these calculated build materials are fantastic. Engineers love them. But the problem you get oftentimes is that what an engineer likes, most other groups within your organization don't like it, right? You have a fastener that you have to, oh, great, yes, oh, somebody put the link up there. Imagine you put, put two fasteners in your assembly, so you put a quantity of two. Well, the purchasing agent, you know, he probably have to buy them in boxes of, of 100, and so he's certainly not going to buy two boxes. Um, my other example is maybe, you know, you can make several parts from those. So, again, uh, maybe my, my, my other favorite example is that as an engineer, you might make some sub-assemblies because it makes it easier for you. You can take those sub-assemblies and pattern them, or, you know, you would probably design slightly different than how the guys on the floor might want to be able to make that part. So again, I might want a different type of bill material that maybe has different things. Well, here's another one. Uh, maybe I want to add some amenities to my bill material. I don't want to model them, but my, as a purchasing agent, I need to be able to buy them, you know, paint, grease, that type of stuff as well. So we need to be able to have two different kinds of bill material. And the way we do that is with a named bill material. So here's how, how, what that looks like. I'm going to look to my bill material again. So this, again, is the calculated build material. This is what, as an engineer, I get over and over again. 
But I can take this guy and do a save as and save it as a BOM type. So this is actually going to be what we call a named bill material. I'm just going to keep the name the same. Now the neat thing about this bill material is, is that it's dead. It no longer is hot. So if ever I go into the future and start making changes to my assembly, this main build material will stay as is. Right? So I can give this to different people and I can say, okay, I know that they can continue to start ordering things on this build material, but I'm going to be able to continue to add different types of things on here. Another nice thing about this, these types of build material is I can come in here and I can tweak them. I can make changes to it. It's like maybe add, uh, I can insert uh, rows. I can delete rows. I can hide them. Come over here to the far right and insert row. I can make different types of changes to this name bill material as I want. So it's very similar to just basically taking the save and taking that as an Excel file. But the big couple of different advantages to a name bill material over an Excel file, one is obviously I don't need Excel installed on my machine. The other one is these name bill materials can be checked in and out as well. And so the nice thing about that is that, that compare tool is still available to me. I can compare different versions of main bill materials if I want to. So I really, I really like that as well. And certainly these main bill materials can go through a, a workflow and maybe I can alert different people as these files go through each one of these guys. So a couple things to kind of be aware of with, with main bill materials. It's a little bit of a different environment. Certainly my toolbar has a little bit different. Um, this filter tool gives the ability to filter that we didn't have before. Uh, this gives me the ability to add uh, balloon numbers if I want. I can go ahead and add uh, additional columns for each one of these if I so choose. But where I find them, where they're stored, if I hit save, so notice there's two different places, two different choices I have up here at the very top. A show files, so that means that this section here is going to show files like what we normally see. But I could say, well, show me the materials instead. And so now I'm not looking at the files in this folder. So build materials are stored in folders, but I'm looking at all the build materials in this particular folder. Click on it. I can see this information right from here. The other way I can see name build materials, switch back to files, is in my main assembly now, if I have my drop list, you see here the little save icon tells me that this is the name build material. So it's one additional way that I can get to these name build materials. And the last really nice thing about this particular tool is this icon right here. And so let's continue the story. Let's imagine that I, I passed out this name bill material and I gave it to somebody with a different types of quantities, whatever changes that I want to make. Because notice, look, they're all blue. I mean, I, I can add anything in here. But time has passed and I've added more parts to my main calculated bill material. If that ever happens, this guy is going to turn from the little um, refresh icon to a big orange exclamation point. I'll show you what that looks like on my next slide here. Now, here we go, right here. So if I ever see that, that's going to look to me that, hey, this main bill material is a little stale. The calculated bill material has more information in it. If I click this button here, then actually what that's going to do is it's going to refresh the calculated information and bring that into my main bill material. So I don't have to retype in all the things that have changed. I do a little bit, and here's what it looks like. I click the refresh button, and it says, hey, okay, which version, which calculated version do I want to bring information from that's changed? And PDM will, will compare, say, oh, here's the new parts, and add them to my name bill material. Um, one thing to be aware of is if I've ever gone through and maybe deleted or temporarily hidden files from my name bill material, the refresh button is going to say, oh, here's those files, and it's going to bring them right back again. So be aware of that. So that's the other great, nice thing about a name bill material over, over an Excel file. So that the ability to quickly bring information back in uh, as we might need it from calculated bill materials. Um, as you would expect, workflows have the ability, if you've ever noticed, what, on your, as an administrator, you've gone through the properties of your workflow. We do have the ability under object types. There's three object types, at least for bill material pro people. Well, actually, I should tell you this. Name bill materials are only available in PDM Pro. So if I'm in PDM Pro, my, if I'm trying to decide which workflow these guys go into, I can actually have the choice between files, bill materials, or items. And of course, we're not going to talk about items, but that, those are the two different choices. So you have a special workflow just for your bill materials if you wanted to. And the last one I want to talk about is activated bill materials. So you've probably seen this guy. It's just a little button in, in your Windows Explorer that gives you the ability to Say, do I want to switch back to a normal build material? 
is this activated or not? Right here it is. Activated or not activated. And so what really activated does is two things. One is that uh, if I click activated, there is a setting if you're ever exporting out your bill materials to, a, to a maybe an XML file. I can say, hey, only activate, uh, only send out the bill material if they've been activated. So it's one way to kind of protect yourself from accidentally releasing bill materials that you haven't really thought of. Somebody has to go through there and activate them. The downside is, in my opinion, though, is that it doesn't warn you if I ever send a file through the transition. It doesn't warn you, hey, this bill material wasn't activated. I didn't send anything out. So you do have to be very diligent and make sure that uh, you're very careful all, and activating your bill materials before you try to release them. And lastly, is that, uh, as you recall, I might have some users, but I don't want them to see my calculated bill materials. But I want to quickly take that bill material and allow other people to see it. Well, as long as I can release renamed bill materials, if I activate it, that's just a really a quick way to take my calculated bill material and say, all right, I'll expose this as a named bill material. And so now I can say, all right, users, you can't really see these bill materials until I've gone through and physically changed it from not activated to activated. And then they're now going to be available. Um, so I really do appreciate you guys spending some time with us this month. I know there's quite a few of you that have come to multiple presentations, so thank you very much. And we hope to see you guys on some more of these. So with that, thank you very much. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you guys on the flip side. See you, everybody.